questions 21 through 25 of the 2000 grade 8 AMC 8. Kiko tosses one penny and Ephraim tosses two pennies. The probability that Ephraim gets the same number of heads as Kiko is. All right, let's make a little table here. And Ephraim is over here. And each of them are going to be tossing pennies. So Kiko only tosses one penny and Ephraim tosses two pennies. So when Kiko tosses his penny, it can be either heads or tails, right? Heads or tails. Those are the only possible combinations, only possible results. Now Ephraim tosses two pennies. So he's got a little bit more in terms of results. So let's make a table of all the possibilities, all the possible combinations. Well, the first one I just wrote, H, H, H. So they toss their coins and they all get heads. The next is Kiko gets a head, but Ephraim gets heads and tails. The first one is heads. The second penny is tails. Then H, tails, and heads like that. And then finally, H, tails, tails. All right? Now let's keep going. This time Kiko tosses and he gets a tails and Ephraim also gets tails. Another combination would be tails, tail and head like that. Tails, heads, tails and then finally tails, head, head like that. Now we have to ask which of these combinations same number of heads because that's what the question is asking. The probability that Ephraim gets the same number of heads as Kiko. Well, here, one head, two heads. Same number of heads? No. Here we have one head, one head, yes. This is the same number of heads, all right? In this situation, one head, one head, so this is also yes. In this situation, one head, zero heads, so no. And all of these, uh, we got zero heads and zero heads, so yes, both have zero heads. Zero heads, one head, so that's not the same. Zero heads, one head, again, not the same. Zero heads and two heads, so certainly not the same. So of our eight possible outcomes, how many resulted in the same number of heads? One two, three. Three out of eight. So the answer to number 21 is B. A cube has edge length two. Suppose we glue a cube of edge length one on top of the big cube so that one of its faces rests entirely on top of the face of the larger cube as shown, like that. The percent increase in surface area from the original cube to the new solid formed is, all right? So first, let's just focus on the original cube, all right? What is the surface area of a cube? Well, surface area is six sides times the area of each of those sides or faces, right? Each face and they tell us has a length of two. So each face, the area will be two by two. So this looks like four times six, so the area, surface area is 24. So that's pretty straightforward. Now we've got this shape right here, and they want you to figure out the surface area, and then we'll compare it to the original's cube. Well, the six faces of the big cube, of those six faces, five are not affected by this new tiny cube that's placed on top. So the surface area of this new cube will be five times the faces that are not affected. Then you have to add to it the area 
up there. So I'll call that region A, whatever you want to call it, doesn't matter. And then the five faces of the small cube. So five small faces. All right, so I hope you agree with me there. Now what I'm going to do is draw the top, like bird's eye view, to get an understanding of what's going on. So the bird's eye view is essentially like this. You got the big cube and then you've got a small cube like that. And our region A is the area that I'm shading in like that. Okay, so how do we first figure out region A? Well, let's label the sides 2, 2, 1, 1 like that. So it would just be region A is 2 times 2 minus 1 times 1. So you have the, the big square minus the small square, and that would give you 4 minus 1, which is 3. So we're almost there. Surface area is 5 big faces minus region or plus region A, which is 3, plus 5 times the small faces. So five big faces, what is the area of each big face? Well, it's two times two, plus three, plus five small faces. The small faces all have an area of one times one. So this looks like four times five, which is 20, plus three, plus five, and therefore that is 28. Now we have to compare the surface area of this new shape to the surface area of the original shape. So 28 over 4 is our comparison or ratio, and that's 7 over 6, and therefore that is approximately 117%. So it increased by 17%. So if we go back, that would be 22 is C. There is a list of seven numbers. The average of the first four numbers is five, and the average of the last four numbers is eight. If the average of all seven numbers is six and four sevenths, then the number common to both sets of four numbers is. Okie dokie. All right, so let's take this one step at a time. Let's label this A, B, C, D, E, F, and G for our seven numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And they told you that the average of the first four is five. So these four, the average is equal to five. And how do you get the average? By dividing by the number of numbers. So that leads us to get this A plus B plus C plus D is equal to 20. And then they tell us that the average of the last four numbers is equal to eight. So D plus E plus F plus G divided by 4 is 8. And therefore, D plus E plus F plus G is equal to 32. And then finally, they tell us the average of all seven numbers is 6 and 4 sevenths. So one, A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G is equal to 6 and four sevenths, but we have to, of course, divide by seven. So A plus B plus C plus D plus E plus F plus G is going to be six and four sevenths multiplied by seven, so that looks like 42 and four, which is, of course, 46, right. Now, what is the question asking us? The number common to both sets of four numbers. Which number was common to both sets of four numbers? It was this one right here, D. So we have to calculate for D. Okay, I think I can do that. So how would we do that? I think the best way, quickest way, is to add this one and this one together. And that would give you 
a plus b plus c plus d plus d plus e plus f plus g is equal to 20 plus 32. But we know that this whole string is equal to 46. So a plus b plus c plus d plus e plus f plus g is 46. And then we are left with this one lone d there is 20 plus 32. So that looks like 52 minus 46 is equal to d. And therefore d is equal to 6. So the answer is choice B. If angle A is equal to 20 degrees and AFG is equal to AGF, then what is angle B plus angle D? So let's start labeling this. Angle A is 20 degrees and angle AFG is equal to angle AGF. So we'll call that x and x. So therefore, 20 plus x plus x is equal to 180. And therefore, 2x is equal to 160. x is equal to 80. So if x is equal to 80, then we know that this angle in here is equal to 100. And the reason is because the angles about a line always add up to 180. So now they want us to figure out angle B plus angle D. Well, we can use this triangle, B, F, D. And you'll notice that in that triangle, the sum, as always, is 180. So angle B plus angle D plus 100 is equal to 180. And therefore, angle B plus angle D is equal to 80. So the answer here would be 24 is D. The area of rectangle ABCD is 72. If point A and the midpoints of B, C, and C, D are joined to form a triangle, the area of that triangle is. So here you have this big uh, rectangle, and we know that the area is equal to 72. And let's start labeling this. We'll call this um, x, x, y, and y. And we know that because these are the midpoints right here. These points right here. That's what the question tells you. And therefore, that's 2y, and this is 2x. So we know that 2x times 2y, length times width, is equal to 72. So 4xy is equal to 72. xy is equal to 18. All right, and now they want us to figure out the area of this triangle in the middle here. So how do we do that? Well, there's a few ways. The one way is just to figure out the area of the entire rectangle and then subtract from it the three smaller triangles. That one, that one, and that one. See what I mean? All right, so let's do that. So the area of triangle A, A, E, F, I just drew in some points there, is the area of the total rectangle, which is going to be 72. That's what the question gave you. And then this shape right here is the first triangle we have to subtract. So that looks like one half base, which is y, times height, which is 2x. And then subtract this triangle, which is going to be one half base, which is y, times x, which is height. And then finally subtract this triangle, which is one half base, which is x, times height, which is 2y. So we get 72 minus xy minus xy over 2 minus xy, like that. So this becomes 72 minus xy 1 plus a half plus 1. 
and therefore this is 72 minus xy. This looks like 2.5 or 5 over 2. Well, xy we figured out already. It was 18 up there. So we can just substitute that in. So 72 minus 18 times 5 over 2. And therefore this is 72 minus 90 divided by 245. And this looks like 27. So the answer is choice B.